It's finally time, guys, for the secrets of the base to be revealed. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we unlocked a ton of tech and new belts so that we could push forward into the future. So that we could get the motors we need to get into tiers 5 and 6 of Project Assembly. However though, in our rush to get more tech, we kinda overbuilt and um... Yeah, we broke the power grid. Again. So it's time for a more permanent solution to our power issues. But first off, Mio, 2 -oh, you bring me anything? Let's see, Mio. Ooh, a little bit of sulfur, thank you so much. Ooh, and 2 -oh, oh, you left me a like. Aw, aren't you the cutest? Alrighty though, let's get started with our first project here. And we are going to be converting this miner into a Mark II, so we can get even more coal. And then we're gonna blast it with power shards to make it even more powerful. And so we can actually test things out. Let's kind of close off the system here. Everything's pretty much broken anyway, so we may as well. Alrighty though. Yeah, 600 coal per minute. Pretty spicy. Pretty spicy. However, we only have a 270 line, so let's knock it down a tab. Yeah? There we go. 113% clock speed for 271 coal per minute. Good. And also, can we power shard the coal plants themselves? Is that a thing? It is a thing. Hmm. That might help us out a little bit here. But first off, everything must go. Temporary setups are no more because this will be our second permanent installation here. And we're gonna be doing things in a bit of a strange way. We're gonna be building this facility as if we already had the 780 lines. So the Mark V belts. Because eventually, it will, right? And luckily, due to handy dandy resources online, we can determine that we will eventually need 71 coal generators off of this one node. And that will provide us with 3,550 megawatts. And this is why I really wanted to get power shards early, because we have nowhere near enough materials to make that many generators. So we're gonna have to make do. But we are getting a little ahead of ourselves here, so let's put together our first foundation and get building. Oh, and very importantly, in the meantime, let's expand our temporary plant so we don't run out of materials. That would be bad. Just a little bit. Oh my goodness. And just barely, we're able to get things started again. Wow. By 0.5 megawatts. Thank goodness for these wind turbines, man. Anyway though, I don't know how long our power grid's gonna last, so let's get on to this project right quick. So, I built over a platform from our base, just so we could line things up properly. And we're all good there. Now we have this huge platformed area ready for coal generators. And I've got a bunch of stuff together so we can build a ton of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the front of, wait, well, I, I actually don't know. The input side of them be facing outwards like this and just make a huge row of them until we have about 10 here. And then I have another side of the factory which we're gonna do something a little different with. And instead of building more coal plants here, we're gonna use this area for load balancing, a little bit of travel, and mainly for decoration. Because even though we're making coal plants, we still want things to look pretty. So that's 20 coal power plants and 20 times 50 megawatts each means we'll have 1,000 megawatts of power here. Which is not bad starting off, not bad at all. Then we'll just throw the power just straight down the middle here. And then we're gonna do something a little weird, actually. We're gonna use the overflow method in our power grid, which is generally a very, very bad idea because you wanna load balance your power out properly so that you don't run into hiccups in your power production. And as seen earlier, hiccups can lead to some pretty significant problems. But to be honest, I more so just want to see how this goes. And if we actually do run into that problem. Because I kind of used the overflow method with our nuclear power plants in the last Let's Play, and everything turned out fine. Mainly because we never came close to using our power capacity. 
But also, even if we were load balancing, because of the variable rate like power plants produce power at, I think even if it was load balanced, I don't think the load balancing really would have helped either. Because how power works in this game, when you're not using the full capacity of your power grid, your power generators aren't working at full capacity. So like right now, where we're 100 megawatts-ish under our limit, many of the coal generators would be working at like 80 or 85% instead of 100%. So if things aren't running at the exact same rate, there's no point in loading the items in the exact same way. Thus, we may as well just use the overflow method. At least those are just my thoughts on the matter. I'm not really an engineer or anything, so I don't really know. But you guys can let me know in the comments below if I'm on the right track or not. Alrighty though, belts and power are in and things are looking mighty spicy. Mighty spicy indeed. And check out the spaghetti. Oh wait, there is no spaghetti because we're fantastic designers. And we have the more factory mod, which allows us to use platforms here so we can organize things better. So how does this work again? Oh yeah, it's super big brain. All right, so all the coal comes up through here into the window, into the bin, up to the second part of the bin. So it's moving up here, goes into a splitter, splits into two, and then splits into four. And due to this new foundation, all this load balancing is compact into like two squares instead of a bunch more. Oh yeah, and we're splitting things into four because we're doing the reverse flow overflow method. I think we need a better name for that. <laughs> it's pretty simple though. Uh, since we have 10 on each side, half of the coal will go in through one side, and the other half of the coal will go in through that side. And this just makes it so there's not as much overflow, and things get going a little bit faster. And also, I'd be lying if I didn't say I wanted to have belts on the interior here. They just look so good when they're up there, man. Then we have the lifts on the end, and that goes in. Yeah. It looks too good. Everything's clean, organized, and decently efficient. Oh yeah, and I guess it'd be pretty efficient too to have some walkways going around here so we can walk around the entire thing in a very safe and organized manner. And now that all the safety regulations are being followed, I guess we get this thing started, eh? So I've already loaded in a little bit of coal and we'll let her loose. Now this should produce a thousand megawatts, but we'll see. We'll take a little bit of time for that to happen though. In the meantime, while everything is loading up, let's actually solve all of the power problems, actually get some power poles hooked up to things, and use some power plugs to spread the love. There we go, so much easier than having the doorways with the power poles going through them. Oh, these mods, man, they're beautiful. Oh wow, and what the heck? Most of them are already going? Really? Oh yeah, and we have our thousand megawatts too. I thought this would take a lot longer. No, we're good, brother. Extra thousand megawatts as if it were nothing. So then what about an extra 2,000 megawatts, hmm? Oh, you see, because I actually wanted to put in another floor right above like this interior space and then add on another 20 coal plants, but, but apparently this encroaches clearance. What about the little ones? Even the little ones, why? Well, that's fine. I only wanted a thousand megawatts anyway. So be it. We'll just make separate coal plants later on. And for now, we can always just add in some power shards to make things a little bit more spicy. Oh my goodness, and guys, power shards were the answer to all of it. Okay, so with this plant here, we have the 20, right? Well, over in this direction, I had enough space to add in another seven. And guess what? If we fully load all of these with power shards, that'll be like having 2.5 more coal generators. So 27 times 2.5 equals 67.5, and 67.5 generators can handle a 780 line of coal coming in to power them. So what I'm trying to get at is, as long as we power shard all of these generators, we will never have to build more and we can continue to upgrade this belt until we have the 780 line. Meaning this is pretty much done. And it wasn't even that difficult either. We had all this space in the world over here. And with all of the coal coming in through this line, it goes into a splitter that splits three ways. So one split goes over there, one split for that row, and another split for that row. So this side's getting a little bit more 
cool than the other two, but whatever, man. It'll be fine. And I've been able to keep things looking pretty dang good, brother. Pretty dang good. But now we got to make things look a lot better. Because now we're off to uh, the decorating portion of this project. We've dabbled here and there. We've added in our safety things. But we still need a roof. And we need to add on our big project. So the roof is pretty straightforward. But the big project is going to be a little bit more spicy. So you see... We are going with the multi-base design in this world. So we're gonna have our starter base, we're gonna have our coal power base, we're gonna have a motor base, we're gonna have bases all over the entire world. All connecting to our one central mega factory. And here's the thing. We are gonna be able to connect them all with something that comes out of the more factory mod. Travel pipes. Now check out these bad boys. They're huge, brother. Huge! Look at that! And we can connect these through all of our different bases that we built. And we can drive cars through them, we might be able to have a train go through them, and they'll be mainly for personal transport. Ooh! And the best thing is when you go through parts, they light up! So if we built a bunch of parts just in a row here, and then drove an extremely fast vehicle through it. You see that? All the lights turn on as we go through. It's like we're going through a warp pipe or something, brother. It's amazing. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Uh, yeah, amazing if we don't fall off and crash. But oh man, if we had trains in there, <laughs> that'd be the best. But really, just having these massive pipes throughout the world is going to be amazing in itself. Because with our multi-base design, I want everything to be pretty tall. I like building tall. So most things will be really tall, and we'll have all of these pipe bridges going around, belt bridges everywhere, and better yet, because of the more factory mod, we have proper pillars to support all these bridges. So check that out. Big old pillar. Big ol' base. And if you can just imagine that being on the ground, this would look great, right? Exactly. And this is also a really nice and simple way to build roads around our world. Of course, though, a project of the scale is gonna require a lot of materials and be uh, pretty spicy to build, especially because these pipes cost a lot of iron plates to build. But so long as we don't go too crazy with everything yet, it should be a fun project. We won't be able to extend it much further after this though, but hey, we'll get the feel for it. Also, we do have a small issue here, because the only way to connect with our coal area is by building this pipe exactly where it is right now. So it lines up with this little strip down here, because we can't really fit any pillars or like bounce pad elevators in these coal areas on either side. So we're kind of forced into this position. Which is all well and good, except for, um, one, uh, big problem. That I actually might have a solution for. So you know this random pillar behind our base where I was planning to move the hub to? Well, what if we move the space elevator to it? It makes a lot of sense, too, because then we have the hub and the space elevator really close by. That's convenient. Have all of our items here. Yeah, and we'll be able to see this from all over this area. So yeah, let's give this a shot. So let's just count out how many tiles we need. Fill it out the platform we need. And move this bad boy over here. Oh, it never gets old. It really doesn't. Dang, that's sick, man. So yeah, pretty happy with this. All we have to do now is decorate it and make it look a little bit more nice and spicy. And I have a pretty good idea with how we're gonna go about that. First, we quickly turn this miner around here. And then to really change things up, we're gonna be using these rounded walls. So we can build this super massive foundation. And look at how snug it fits around the miner here. Unbelievable, actually. It's meant to be. Ooh, or maybe it wasn't, because this pillar isn't centered. 
There's one tile here, and two tiles over there. Uh huh. I don't think we can really move these back any further. Like, we're right on the edge of the cliff already. Well, how about this? Let's try out the pillared approach. So we're supposed to pillar down to here, around the miner, which fits insanely well. Like, it fits so well, I'm really trying to force this idea here. Like, how perfect is that, right? But then, wait. Oh, god, wait. <laughs> we can't even fit now more than one pillar. Oof. Hmm, this might be a little too spicy, actually. Because there's no way I want to get rid of this miner. Because this is a pure node right beside our starter base, like... Come on, it's too good! Nor do I want to just make, like, a giant pillar with these big pillar things. Because they're gonna be all over the place with our new travel pipe project. I really wanted to make, like, a really neat foundation. So, I guess then we're just gonna move this to some other temporary location. For now. And we'll find a permanent place for it in the future. Just regardless of anything, it can't be over here because of our new travel pipe system. Like, it's gonna be centered right here, right? So, yeah. Not gonna be a thing. So, for now then, we're just gonna put it down uh, way over here. Right by our Caterium node, ways away from the base. And in front of all the pretty waterfalls and stuff. Gives us an excuse to go look at them. And also, and also, we're not gonna be building here for a very long time. So it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, yeah, bud, and we get to watch this again! Oh, goodness gracious. I can't believe this is such a low-tech tier thing. Like, we could build this before we could build motors. Like, <laughs> what a weird game, eh? Okay, there we go. Locked in. Speech thing down. And that's good to sit there for a while. And now that gives us a ton of extra space to add on to our starter base. Ooh, baby. I got some design plans for this. But first off, let's line up our travel pipe with our actual base. So what floor is this? One, two, three, third floor is traveling again? Okay. That's fine. Then I'll just move this up a couple tiles. So we still have one minor problem! Aside from that. And that is this freaking moth, which flies pretty much where I want my travel pipe to be. Every time. Every time. You thought you'd leave the green valley, leave the moths behind. Nope. Still a problem. So, we have to be a little weird with things. And instead of having the travel pipe flush with this floor, we're gonna have to go down a little bit using, I don't know, I guess the walkway ramps. And those will lead into the travel pipe. And that's how things will have to go. So, extremely annoying, yeah. But at the end of the day, I guess it kind of looks more cool if we're walking at this level and see the pipe, instead of walking at this level and just see this huge opening in the corner. So, pros and cons, I suppose. But there is another major con. And that is, I've measured the entire coal plant based off of the platform that was for the space elevator. Not off of the platform, that's for the actual starter base. So our measurements are a little bit off, which is only slightly annoying. But this is the kind of problem we'd run into eventually, so I guess we'll find some way to solve it. I hate you, moth. I hate you. I hate you. It still cuts through! <laughs> Why? Why? Oh my goodness, things are actually almost fine too. Like, look at how close this is. We could have made something work. Well, that moth. Number one enemy of design. So off to plan B then. And that is to have the travel pipe beside the coal plant building. So it will be this 3x3 three three little shoebox here. Going all the way up. And then the travel pipe will kind of just stop by. So with the pipe stopping here, there's like a little landing pad here. This gets you into the coal area, and that's that. But every solution just leads into more problems. And now, we have to figure out how the heck we're gonna make this look good with this factory. Obviously we're building walls up to this platform, so that's number one. 
I don't think we just want to use these walls though. We have anything or any alternatives in here? We have platform walls, half steel walls as well, and fencing walls. Well, how do these look? Okay, so that's like a support bracket. Pretty straightforward. Half steel is <laughs> pretty self explanatory. I'm not sure how we'd use that in the design. Maybe as a window? And then there's the fence. But the fence really just looks like a fence. Like, if we stack these up, it doesn't look taller. It looks like you just put two fences on top of each other, right? Yeah, no, the design doesn't really connect well. But, like, maybe if we surrounded, like, a miner in these things, that would look cool. But they're definitely not for this project. So, adios. And I guess we just work with the three amigos here. Until we figure out some design. Okay, so we got some good news, we got some bad news. Good news is, I actually made this pipe really flush with the roof here. Like, look at how good this looks, right? Like, we got these walkway things kind of blending it all together. And then since the platforms and the walls weren't centered, I was able to build all these platforms off of these squares to make them flush with this. And then I just added on a couple more walkways just here as a little step up. So it doesn't look as weird. And it plugs the little gap that goes down to infinity. So up here, everything just worked out. Even got a huge jelly pad right next door. And on to the bad news though. <laughs> we got looking good up there. But down here, it's a little, um, not good. There's too many lines, man. There's too many lines. This is all your fault. Ah, but you can see where the center line is, and it doesn't center, and it's like, you, you can't unsee it. So that sucks. Um, yeah. More good news, though. The rest of the factory looks great. Like, we added on those little factory roofs type things there. I did a little bit of interior work as well. Added in some windows, a little bit of details here. And we can walk up this walkway. There's tons of space. Windows looking at all the machines. And, of course, the big boss window, looking over it all. So yeah, everything's good, except for that one line, way up there. So we're kind of at an impasse here. We got a good-looking project there, got a good-looking project down here, but they both don't look good together. So, idea number one is to simply not connect this walkway to the coal plant. Because we really don't have to. Like, we're never really going to be coming down here again, right? Like, it's a power plant. It makes power. There's nothing to manage. There's nothing to see. We don't need to grab coal from here either because we have coal at the steel mill. So it's like, yeah. It's kind of redundant. And also, the travel pipe would look pretty good still if it just went straight through all of this and passed right overhead. It kind of makes this plant seem really small and insignificant to the grand scale of all of our projects. That'll be all around us. Yeah, that's idea number one. Idea number two is horrifically obvious, but we move this entire facility to line up with this platform. So pretty much by like half an inch. Well, that requires destroying everything. And option number three is kind of letting caution to the wind. And we line up the platform and this huge travel pipe with the coal plant. So at this factory here, It'll look kind of weird, pretty weird, but everything will end up working out. So yeah, I don't really know. Just gonna sit on the idea though, and we'll try and fix it maybe on a live stream or maybe in the next episode, because we have a lot more building to do, brother. But yeah, maybe you guys can give me some ideas in the comments, and I'm gonna think about it a little bit more. Anyway, let's check the doggos. Ooh, thank you very much, and... Oh, thank you very much, Mio Tuo. Thanks for the good vibes at the end of the episode here. Because, yeah, we'll be finishing off things next time. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>